Another more complex way, but does have some advantages, is to actually do the subcutaneous stitch so that the knot is not sitting just under the dermis like it is here when I, when I tie the, the, the tissue together, but actually having the knot at the bottom of our dead space. And so the knot can be at the top of the dead space like I just showed you with the simple interrupted, or we can put the knot at the bottom. And what I do in that scenario is I'll actually take my needle, and I'm going to bend it a little bit more so I have a little more, little more of a curvature to it to help me get in and out a little bit. With this scenario, I basically go to the bottom of my dead space. I come up one side, okay. As you can see, I'm coming up the side. Here, I'm going to catch the underside of the dermis and then come out the side of the dermis. So I come up one side, up one side, across the dermis to the other side. I'm going to go across to the other side of the opening my needle. I'm going to reach through, go in the side of the dermis, out the bottom of the dermis, down to the bottom of my dead space, and then pop back out at the bottom of my dead space. This is going to allow me to close this, and my knot is going to remain at the bottom surface. Okay, now you notice here you can actually see a line going across from this dermis to this dermal surface. And you notice that both my threads are on the same side. This is what you're shooting for. If my thread were to perhaps come up on the other side, one of the threads come up on the other side like such, which happens fairly frequently, okay, what I would then do is I would reach through with my pair of forceps or some other instrument, pull the thread so both threads are on the same side. The only reason we want to do that is when I tie these two together from my knot, if I tie the knot so it's resting above this transverse um, thread going from dermis to dermis, my knot is going to be sitting up on top actually in the dermis, which is going to interfere with my closure. By pulling the threads to both sides, when I go ahead and close this now, the knot will be pulled down to the base of the derm to the base of the dead space, ensuring that I'm not going to have any knot problems interfering with my closure, my surface closure. So that I pull it tight. You can see that the knot is getting sucked down. Once again, okay, I cut pretty close. My knot is sitting down there. You can see it's actually deep in there. I just kind of push it down to the bottom. And all we're seeing here now is a line going across here, closure, and then I can go ahead and finish up with whatever sort of stitch I want in that area. So those are the two different subcutaneous stitches. Another type of subcutaneous stitch that works fairly well also is kind of a purse string. So in other words, instead of going this direction with the stitch deep and, and shallow, I can go around like such. So I basically grab tissue in the opening, grab some more tissue, grab some more tissue, grab some more tissue, grab some more tissue in the dead space, and then pull it together like a little purse string, like you have a little bag with marbles in it, and that's going to kind of close the whole thing up and then I tie the knot off, and the knot will drop down into the middle area. So those are three different ways of doing subcutaneous stitches.